This video is sponsored by Hoya Miles. Engineers at MIT and a company out of Detroit called Shero Engineering have made a breakthrough by creating the world's first toroidal propellers. These innovative propellers use a ring or donut shaped blade design that allows for greater energy efficiency, reduced noise, and increased thrust. And I got hundreds of DIYers on YouTube 3D printing their own. But sadly, almost all of them fail to get the results they expected, especially for drones. So is this design a real breakthrough? Is it even all that new? And what could it do for the future of things like cargo ships? across the Atlantic and Pacific, air taxis and drones? Let's find out. I'm Ricky, and this is 2-Bit Da Vinci. You might not know this about me, but I'm a mechanical engineer. And in mechanical engineering, it's not very common to see huge increases in performance in one model to another. Normally, you'll see 1 or 2% increases. Now, that's important because those add up over time to make internal combustion engines or DC motors better and better little by little. Now, when you see huge improvements in just one change, that is really rare and special. That's why when I first heard about a new boat propeller design reported to be 105% more efficient that can improve a boat's fuel efficiency and top speed by as much as 46 and 27% respectively, while at the same time operating much more smoothly and quietly, I was definitely interested. And you should be as well. By the way, since as I'll explain in today's video, this can have a huge impact on our day-to-day -day lives, even if we never as much as set foot on a boat. Boat propellers have been around for almost 200 years. The first screw type propeller was allegedly invented all the way back in 1826 by a Czech Austrian inventor called Joseph Rissel and based on an Archimedes screw design that's more than 2200 years old. But the more modern version with individual blades like the ones we see on most boats today was discovered by chance in 1835 by the English inventor Francis Petit Smith. According to one story, Smith was testing a new screw propeller design by running a boat in some English canals when he broke off a piece of the propeller. And to Smith's surprise, the broken propeller doubled the boat's previous speed from about four miles per hour to about eight. Smith would later patent this accidental discovery. What is it about accidental discoveries that I just love? Like the discovery of rubber video. In the description. Others also credit the American inventor John Erickson, known for building the SS Monitor, and the French inventor Frederick Savard, both of whom had already filed for separate patents for a similar screw propeller design around the same time Smith did. But before we get back to that, let me take a quick minute and tell you about our sponsor this week, Hoy Miles. Our solar system is finally up and I'm so excited. In fact, in a little over a week, we've made 546 kilowatt hours of energy, which is Amazing. With Hoy Miles, you have microinverters, which means that each panel produces energy and goes into AC to feed your house. The benefits of that is panel by panel monitoring, as you can see here. Now, later in the day, like it is right now, these four panels that are facing west are producing more energy, as you can see here on this graph, than my other panels. And also, as you can see here on this graph, four of the panels are not working. I did that on purpose to show you the value of having panel by panel monitoring. With Hoy Miles, you have access to the panel by panel production. As you can see here, those four panels need to be fixed. We'll take care of that in the coming weeks. And by the next time we talk about this, we'll have that sorted out. So it's super easy to tell if your panels are all producing. Without panel by panel production, you wouldn't know but just one sheer number. Also with Hoy Miles, I was able to save thousands of dollars because I have a lot of four in one and two in one inverters. In fact, my 29 panels only require 10 microinverters. And as a result, I saved a ton of money. So get the best benefits of microinverters while also saving money, sometimes even cheaper than a string inverter with Hoy Miles, links in the description. Huge thanks to Hoy Miles and you for supporting the show. Here's the crazy part. After nearly two centuries of building better boats and propellers, the overall design has remained pretty much the same as it did back in 1836. Talk about nailing a great design. That is until the appearance of the toroidal boat propeller. The toroidal propeller is a new design invented by Gregory Shero and sold through his company, Shero Marine. The MX-3 propeller for recreational boats has been very successful and has won multiple awards, including the 2020 NMMA Innovation Award and the 2022 Marine Power Innovation Award from Boating Magazine. And now it's even popular on YouTube amongst the boating community. It all has to do with the MX Props awesome performance, which is backed by tons of real world data from all of Shero Marine's customers. You see, every time Shero Marine sells one of its props, it sends a team down to install and validate its performance. The most significant success was a client who installed MX Props on a Galleon 325 GTO with twin Mercury 400 horsepower outboard motors and saw the rotor efficiency increase from 38 
to 78% at 4,000 RPM. That's an increase of 105%. By the way, propeller efficiency is a bit different from other efficiency metrics we've discussed before on this channel. It measures how well the prop converts the motor's power into thrust, which is what pushes the boat forward. For example, an efficiency of 50% means that if your motor is pumping out 300 horsepower or approximately 220 kilowatts, the propeller is producing 110 kilonewtons of thrust or around 25,000 pounds of force. Although it obviously plays a role in it, Propeller efficiency doesn't refer to how well the energy in the fuel is converted into motion. That's called fuel efficiency and is usually measured in miles per gallon. What this 105% increase really means is that just by swapping the props, your boat gets over twice as much thrust, even though the motor is running at the same speed. Several specialists from the boating industry have also done their independent studies to review these props. For example, Boat Test evaluated a 57-foot catamaran Voodoo powered by a pair of 300 horsepower OXE diesel outboard engines and found that the props increased fuel efficiency by 46 percent from 0.72 miles per gallon to 1.05 miles per gallon now those numbers sound really low but remember these are boats are moving through the water it's a different ball game don't compare it to cars that change is still really dramatic the props were also much quieter and vibrated less than the standard props they had before if you're a boater, besides spending much less on fuel, this has the added benefit of being able to talk without yelling at each other at cruising speed, something you could only experience with a closed cabin. And less vibration also means more longevity for mechanical systems. Let's look at cost. This is where things get interesting because Shero props are crazy expensive. They cost 10 times as much as their rivals running up around $5,000 each. And if you have a boat that has twin engines, well, that's 10 grand just for propellers. For reference, a standard high quality propeller of the same size and pitch costs only around $500 on Amazon. The good news is that you can recover this investment quite quickly, depending on how frequently you use your boat and the average fuel price. Let's take the Voodoo Catamaran as an example with its 46% improved fuel efficiency. The boat's cruise speed is 18 knots or 20.7 miles per hour, and a typical recreational boat is used between 75 and 150 hours per year. Let's average that to 100 hours, and so that'll be around 2,070 miles every year. At that speed, fuel efficiency is around 1.05 miles per gallon for the MX props and 0.72 miles per gallon for the standard prop. So you would consume 1,971 gallons of fuel with the Shero MX and 2875 gallons with the standard propeller. That means that the Shero prop saves you around 900 gallons of fuel every year and that's per boat. With diesel prices at around $4 per gallon, that's $3,600 saved on fuel alone every single year. So it only takes you around three years to get your money back. And some marinas are selling diesel at $5.70 per gallon. So you could break even, even quicker. Not too shabby. The MX-3 is a popular swap-on replacement for small recreational boats. And the best thing is that you can buy them right now. But Cheryl also designs bigger, more complex turtle props for the boating manufacturers that are end users. They have several different exotic designs on their patents, two of which were translated into the nx series of propellers. Speaking of patents, the YouTube channel Zeroth recently made a video about Cheryl's propellers, which we'll link to after this one. You should definitely check it out, where he correctly pointed out that the toroidal design may not really have even been Cheryl's idea, since there was a much older Australian patent from 1969 granted to David B. Sidgen for an undulating flow promoting rotor that fits the description of a toroidal propeller. But I found an even older patent from 1892 by an English inventor named Charles Myers who designed something that remarkably resembles the MX propellers with some variations in dimensions and other parameters. But wait, there's more. Okay, that's, that's cheesy. All right, I found another more recent patent from 2005 granted to Ronald R. Polacek that more closely resembles Shero's design. It seems like the idea of a loop-shaped toroidal propeller wasn't really all that new when Shero patented it. But what do you think? Sound off in the comments below. We'll come back to the patents of it all when we talk about MIT's propellers. So definitely you don't wanna miss that. Now I know a lot of you guys don't live near the water. You don't own a boat. You don't go boating on the weekend. So you might be thinking, what does all this have to do with me? Well, it turns out a lot actually, not just you, 
but everyone. The reason is simple. These propellers have the potential to revolutionize the shipping industry. According to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, ocean shipping accounts for 80% of world trade. And everything related to shipping has an important impact on things like inflation, food availability, and the international supply chain. We made a recent video about the race for the Arctic, where we covered how opening a sea route from the Atlantic to the Pacific Oceans through the Arctic Ocean could cut distances from Asia to Europe and the US by as much as 45% and reduce shipping times from 30 to just 18 days. So if you haven't watched that video, check it out next. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, suppose we outfitted those cargo ships with these new propellers. They'd have to be bigger, of course, but these propellers offer the chance to cut down those costs even further. Fuel costs represent 50 to 60% of the shipping industry's total operational cost. Increasing fuel efficiency then by close to 50% would cut the total shipping cost by around 25 to 30%. Shipping times would also be reduced, both because of increased speed and increased total range with fewer stops along the way. Finally, a boost in efficiency like these are exactly the type of progress we need to electrify the shipping industry. Getting 30 to 50% more work out of the same electric motor would reduce the required energy storage capacity needed, which means less batteries. And this would all come from a simple swap-on replacement no new hardware infrastructure or anything else. That's the part about this story that I think is the most fascinating. So that's how toroidal propellers can be a game changer for boat and marine applications. But what about other fluids like air? In Shero's patents, he states that their propeller design could work on all sorts of applications from boats to subs to pumps to turbofans and even propellers for drones and other aircraft. However, this design is far from optimal for most of those applications, since moving through the air is very different from moving through water. That's where the recently unveiled propeller design from MIT comes in. According to one of their authors, the idea came from looking at a way to make propellers quieter. In their research, they came across a ring-shaped wing that doesn't produce any tip vortices because, well, it doesn't have any wing tips. These vortices cause the loss of thrust and they're responsible for much of the high-pitched noise associated with traditional propeller blades on drones and other unmanned aircraft. So they had the idea to twist the ring-shaped wing into a sort of loop they call the toroidal propeller. So a kind of a similar design to Shero, right? Yeah. However, in this case, the propeller is 3D printed out of plastic, not stainless steel. Thanks to this design, the folks at MIT managed to produce a propeller that is significantly quieter than the three-blade propellers commonly used on drones today. Tests showed that the toroidal propeller significantly reduces noise in the 1 to 5 kilohertz range, which is where the high-pitched buzzing sound you typically associate with drones comes from. Consequently, these propellers have a deeper, less annoying sound coming out of them at the same RPM. Noise reduction was the main goal for the team at MIT, and everything points to success on that front. However, this wasn't the only advantage that these props possess. According to MIT, these props also produce more thrust, though they don't state exactly how much more. Because of the rise of personal drones like we have, and a lot of YouTubers have, people have started to 3D print and try out their own variations, and let's just say that the results have been all over the map but I personally believe that there's a good explanation behind these mixed results. The main reason is the design itself. I mean, actual CAD design with the correct dimensions and propeller profile, not easy. If you see any of the many YouTube videos out there where they make these props, you'll notice a constant factor, which is that most designs are simply circles extruded at an angle and joined on one end. This will, of course, give you a design that looks very similar to MIT's design, but when it comes to aerodynamics, especially at high speeds, like the ones of a drone propeller, the devils in the details. We don't know how many iterations the team at MIT went through to reach their final design, but I'm willing to bet it was a lot more than what the DIY crowd managed to pull off, especially considering that they have access to high level computation and simulation computers to be able to try out every little pitch and angle and perfect their design. If you don't believe me, consider that there is a reason why Shero's top of the line propellers require high precision six axis CNC milling machines to get the shapes and the finish just right. And each propeller is optimized for each actual particular type of motor. So it's not as simple to make or to just swap out. You need the blades to be perfectly balanced so you don't have high vibrations 
while in operation at high RPM. Typically, 3D printing won't produce a well-balanced propeller every time, and you might have to add counterweights or sand and do some final touches to get a good balanced design. And finally, there's the material choice. The importance of 3D printed materials can't be understated. Johnny from Willet Mod proved this quite effectively when he compared the results of a standard PLA printed toroidal propeller with a copper silk PLA version, which was more flexible. So I think the fact that John and others have managed to get good results with suboptimal designs is really a measure of how promising this potential could be. They could potentially power turboprop airplanes as well as choppers and other VTOL airships like air taxis and cargo drones. This is where I think the most impact will be. The propellers are quieter, but they're not quite enough for them to be undetectable by any means. So apart from making the drone fly experience more enjoyable for pilots, the noise reduction will be a much welcome addition to cities all around, especially as the number of drones in the air are probably gonna start to be on the rise. But all that aside, what I love most about this toroidal propeller is that it represents a step change in technology that has seen very little progress over the years, and it doesn't involve a complete infrastructure overhaul, right? It's not like going from a gas car to an electric car. That is a massive shift. This is much simpler. If we were able to innovate propellers, something that's been stagnant for years, there's no telling what other advances in mechanical engineering and design await us in the future, especially with the rise of 3D printing, rapid prototyping, simulations, being able to do a thousand different flights and optimize design so quickly. That combination of factors was never possible in engineering until now and it's gonna leave some pretty epic stuff. All right, so if you like this video, check out this one next. I think you're gonna also like. Until next week, I'm Ricky. Thank you for watching.